on this episode of the Roundtable Podcast, there is some nuggets in this big boy right here. Yeah, trying to level up your personal growth, talking about competitive edge and how to fucking control what you can control. Trip on. Yeah, I think it was a banger episode, Um, given that Danny didn't know that he was going to run it, like, not Shock. even, like, a minute before we started. So, <laughs> I think there. Danny performed pretty well. Oh, thank did, you, Trey. Trey. Thanks, Trey. I <laughs> think this was a great episode. There's a lot of great conversation, and anyone, like, in business or just wanting to grow as a person, as a human being, and become, like, unkillable, you should listen to this. Unkillable, and I'm going to tell your ass when you sp- when you press on the fucking gas and when you don't. You're going to learn that. Uh, Cole dropped some nuggets. Trey dropped some nuggets. Danny did a good we job. We talk a lot the about show. the power I formation. Or <laughs> yeah. the yeah. the football just, reference is pretty yeah, amazing. <laughs> All right, this is an elite round table episode. Go to it right now. One round table podcast. I'm your boy Corey G. at Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speed in the graphic gangster himself. Cole Susak brought to you by Sam Adams. MaxEffortMuscle.com and Manscape. Use the code Small Arms with a Z. And then what do they get, Danny? They get twenty percent off That's and right. free shipping. Oh, double wet, double, double wet. wet. It's a double yeah. wet deal. Yeah, it is a double wet deal. Wet. That's yeah. a su- super double wet. You know what else is super wet? <laughs> what, Cole? Today's uh, basically <laughs> today's uh, basically a holiday. It's you know uh, it's the one time of the year where. You know, obviously we fucking hit the gym hard. You know, every Flex Friday we're in there yeah. banging, you know, biceps, sure. triceps, traps, yes. the calves, okay. the chest, yeah, all of it. Yes. And today, <laughs> hey, what's the holiday? <laughs> today while recording is May the 4th, you know, so yeah. Arms Army inspired, you know, mm-hmm. Danny did a whole thing of small or not small. And I think this uh, is the, you know, once a year you need uh, time to reflect and, you know, question yourself, are, am I being small or am I not being small? Okay. So, so it's make, a, it's make a great sure holiday. you go to the, uh, the Arms Army channel to That's right. do yourself a favor. You're either small or not small. Small or not small. So did you have to ask yourself that today, Danny? Obviously not. Oh, okay. Yeah. You just assumed you were not small? Yeah, daddy's yacked. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one, yacked. Daddy's yeah. yacked. Yeah. Jeez. So, I don't yeah. even know where you go from there, yeah. Daniel. So may yeah. the fourth be with you. Oh, <laughs> we're like, we're yeah. the shirt today. Yeah. Wow. So is those your fucking, did you, yeah. those are the pajamas that have the fucking. They are pajamas. My, they, yeah, my, uh, my little girl is wearing a crew neck uh, with Grogu on it today. Shout I feel out. like those pajamas could have like feet in them. Like it's like. Uh, they, it's, it's so like she has, she has the matching uh, onesie or whatever. Yep, and there there's do have the, the foot thing. You look sure. awesome in a onesie. That yeah, I'd wear. I don't no, care. I know. You, yeah. know you, ain't, you ain't small. I'm not lying. The, so this company is called Little Sleepies is what it's oh. called. And they're like the most comfortable like <laughs> yeah. like clothing ever. Don't sleepy on Little Sleepy. Shout out. Yeah. Shout Fucking out. shout out. No free shout outs. Dude, sleepy. If you, if you look up does, their Instagram. Does it make your arms bigger? I think that's a real important question. Yeah. They, they definitely uh, snuggle. How arms. many inches they add? Six or nine. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect way to segment into. Yeah. Like Dan has uh, six to nine kind of talking points that he got from another podcast that we did uh, on the personal uh, growth development type of side. So you just want to throw out a fucking yeah, this is basically like small statement arm says. and then we'll yeah, just fucking wrap way, with it. Yeah, it's, it's a version of small arm says, but all these will be kind of in the, uh, you know, kind of personal growth ish. Um, category. So Mm -hmm. just kind of going down a few bullet points we can kind of riff on. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, one thing that Coach Deegan, Mm -hmm. shout out. Shout out Coach Deegan. um, Not small. Uh, He's definitely not small. He has a great newsletter. So he he was was talking about (laughs) – yeah, plug the newsletter. (laughs) Play ball newsletter. Sign up for it, CoachMikeDeegan.com. All right. uh, Biggest competitive edge. So that one really kind of stood out to me. Um, and his was like, especially in his area, mm-hmm. was to like face reality. So like, not just like thinking that everything is fucking, mm-hmm. you know, roses all the time, and thinking that your idea is not flawed or anything like that. So he was talking about like just the ability to actually face a situation ob- objectively mm-hmm. versus like, you know, a sky in the clouds or whatever, can be a very like um, competitive advantage. I'll take it so, from there. So, yeah. you in some business things, right? You can emotionally love it and think it's amazing, but it could be the wrong demo. It could be presented the wrong way. So your result of it could be not very good, meaning in our case, the sales, right? So we could do one style of content, one style of sales, and we think it's awesome. And it looks awesome. And it, you think it should work. 
And then, but if the result isn't there, you have to face reality and say, well, fuck, we need to try a different way, even if we don't like it or it feels weird or what you just, so that face reality for him is like, uh, we did all these things well while we practiced, while we did, but our game plan just don't fucking work. We get the wrong guys in the wrong spot. So that is like a hard thing because I think we've seen this in this business at Max Effort. Like we feel like we're in a groove, things are rocking. You don't even think about other like factors, but you're like, the stuff is just not hitting <clears throat> to the goal of X amount of sales. Mm -hmm. And so as we're seeing kind of right now with some of the dialogue and things that we're, we're working is working really well. So I think that's a that's a hard point sometimes. So I'll I'll, I'll bounce it to yeah, me go now. Ahead. So personally, in this wraps into everything that we do mm -hmm. is you know like me personally, I'm just not fucking scared. None of us are really scared to try anything new. Yep. So we really never limit ourselves. You know, if if shit doesn't work out, it's not really a big deal because we're just on to the next. Yeah, just move, the next keep idea. it moving. <laughs> it's always happening, and, and we never sit there and be like. Oh man, I I maybe I should do this. Yeah, I don't no. know. Just, we just, no, we let's just, fucking we, try it. We just try it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a, that agility is big. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah, and then I would say also like when you are like setting those goals and everything, like like having that reality that some goals aren't like you know what I mean, like are too far fetched out the gate too. So like I think that's a part of like facing reality is knowing that the stuff that you have in front of you like is realistic and that you can't mm -hmm. obtain that. And then when you want to go get more than like setting it farther out. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. The, the one thing that first comes to mind is like something as basic as like if you're a small business or a medium business, or whatever, and you're about to run, you know, a Facebook and Instagram ad campaign. Right. And then you come up with 10 variations. You're like, these are fucking sick. You know, these are going to kill it. And then like, it's like, crickets like, i've done that a bunch of times you know what i mean you like you, you think like, it's what? gonna do awesome and you're like this yeah. doesn't even make sense like why didn't this not work but like the proof is in the numbers right so and that kind of goes back to like how we're starting to make you know make better decisions like just business wise you mm -hmm. know even like what works on an email marketing campaign or an email flow or something like that you know i think one thing and then i'm proven wrong <laughs> like it happens all the time some of the cheesiest marketing shit works the best, which is where I have a fucking problem. Because, or the most simple too. Well, yeah. I'm okay with simple. Actually, that's much easier, but it's like some of the stuff I know that has sold crazy amounts of fucking eBooks and done all this. It's like, I just, it, it's like unauthentic for me, so, which is why I don't do things that way. Right. Mm -hmm. So I've got to find the most simple, authentic way to get those same results, which sometimes is a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hold on. So yeah. you, you're talking about small to medium businesses that took my mind to someone who's like wanting to start their own business. Yeah. And the first thing I thought of was you even, you have to be aware of what like your fucking competitive advantages are. Mm. And that could be what I'm good at your skill set. Are you good at talking on the phone? Are you good at talking to people? Mm -hmm. That could be advantage or it could be the opposite. You know that your weakness is I can't talk to people. So you have to then strategically say, I'll probably do most of my communication through email or fucking text or something like that. Like that starting out is you have to be aware of that because your strengths are basically your business. Like, you'd like, don't try to start your business trying to front of something that you're Cole, not. you just laid down some fucking what? little dimes for my fucking right there, boy. And if you have a small team or a partner or whatever, like, the D word, delegate, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, you have to be able to, like, hand off the reins versus wanting to fucking hold on for dear life all yeah. the time. Because, uh... Cause this is like some like real marketing shit I learned at Ohio state that mm -hmm. I've now incorporated into mm -hmm. like the business structure is the fucking SWOT analysis, which is it's uh strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So you can go down through the list. Yeah. These are my strengths. These are my weaknesses. Just be super fucking blunt with that. Like you yeah, have to be brutally have honest be. with yourself and what you're good at. Yeah. The opportunities is like, okay, I'm good at the phone. That means I can fucking make a million calls. I'll drive the fucking people's houses, talk to them, do whatever. That's how I can get the opportunity. Then the threats are like, what what's your business like basically based on like if you're all on a website then your your threat is what if the fucking website platform shuts down yeah that's like some real shit you got to think about mm -hmm. so just being aware of that stuff it's well clutch. you guys just watch me throw myself into a situation because i need i need to be in person mm -hmm. i know that about myself every situation that i get involved in personally after i create a relationship it is always better almost every time so I went out of my way to go to the event in LA because I knew I needed to, you know, just create a better relationship with the people out there that have been helping me. And every time, and I knew this early in my career when I was doing personal training, I knew there was eight personal trainers within probably 10 miles that were better than me, but I don't know if they were better than 
you know, caring about the individual, the way that I would operate with them. Just, I think my small town mentality of like how I was brought up, mm -hmm. like my, my interaction skills, I knew that was my key. So if people would just come try a session with me, that's it. I would, they would be thinking I need to have this guy as my personal trainer. I was exactly right. That was one of my absolute strengths. There wasn't really an internet situation then so that I can't really like, I really couldn't market that way. I needed to get people in front of me, yeah. but I don't care what level a person this goes, Arnold tiger getting in front of Kyle Richards, the people I've worked with all these athletes. Like once I got a chance to just be authentically me, they know I really care about the things that I do, which I'm hoping to add value to them, which is what I'm doing and that I'm about it. And I'm not going to fucking be fanboying the shit out of any of them. I know they're just people and they're really great at what they do. And I want to learn from people like that. So I want to see how can I compliment it. And when it's real like that, no matter what level of person they feel it. Mm -hmm. So that is my superpower. It always has been. And so mm -hmm. uh, if you know those type of things out the gate, when you're starting your business, you got to rely on that shit heavy. I still do. Cause that's basically what that's your differentiator. That's yeah, all you can't copy sure. that. Like people yeah. wonder about that. Uh, those things about me all the time. Well, how'd yeah. you get in front of this person? How'd you get the, that? I added value. And then when I had an opportunity, I just went and did it. And mm -hmm. then I don't even feel weird because I've already been interacting with them. So I don't got to act any different way. I just act mm -hmm. like me. My workouts are what got me in a room in the first place. That's it. It's really that simple. It's one thing but you not definitely simple. can't fake. <laughs> Obviously, can't fake it. In person. Yeah. You can't no. online. And, and like you got to like realize of if you're watching someone who's kind of in the same thing and you kind of want to be like them, but they're doing shit that's super crazy and different, you just got to realize like you don't have to be like them. No. They're like that for their way. Yeah. You can develop your own way. Mm -hmm. Like there would probably be, it'd probably be super tough if someone wanted to watch the fucking vlog we did today or pumping and yelling, yeah. but they're in a gym or they've never even acted like that. Like that's a whole different thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, there's a lot of factors of why we yeah. can act like that. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And I would act like that anyway. <laughs> Yeah. I might do it a little bit more because like, I know that's what we're building that day. But I mean, this is how me and Dustin, like we were doing that shit in high school. Like it ain't changed. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, that's a really great point because if you're procrastinating on, this is a good way to understand like probably what you're not good at. Like everything I procrastinate on is stuff I know I'm not good at because I know it takes me twice the amount of time to do it. There's shit I still have to handle just as a businessman, but I put it off. I put it on. I know those are the, I could just go, there's my list. And I could just look down my procrastination list and tell you exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a good indicator. So, so a good segue um, would be talking about just, this is kind of going back to some of like the stoic philosophy stuff. So mm -hmm. like, you know, you experience a big victory or defeat or whatever it may be. So like staying more so, in the middle or even like indifferent to some extent. So like not riding the high too fucking high. Cause it's always, there's, it's always going to come back down. Oh yeah. So how do you, how do you guys kind of like think about that? Like if you guys experience like a, a big fucking win, like are you holding on to it for like a month or is it like a day thing or like, you know, or when you're down on the other side, like how do you guys handle that? Trey, you want to start in this one? Yeah. Um, I would say like in the reality, like on both sides, <laughs> like whether you win or you lose, like the reality is like the, biggest thing that I think you can do is just like keep going and keep pushing because like we always talk about like consistency and like consistency is what's going to keep you in the game it's what's going to put you on top so like just keeping like just like the pr just the process of like not stopping and just keep going I think that alone is going to be like way more powerful than like if you're going to like you know I mean whether you're doing whatever celebrating and getting down on yourself whatever just keep on keep on the process of like that's what you've already been doing for like 300 days before yeah. why, and like you win or you lose like why would you stop it's clearly been working for you it's, it's, it's also the same point so. it's just the other side right mm -hmm. so it's like i think <clears throat> that um i think there's some people that think when there's a certain win that one it carries for a really long time yeah. right even guys that win super bowls don't did think. you see um ahead, like did you see yon like um after like you know the bucks yes. lost so like Giannis, like yes. in the press conference after mm -hmm. he said like they asked him like do you think that this season's a failure? He yep. said, no, like, why would I think this season's a failure? Because Michael Jordan played, was like 15 years. I saw that one too. 15 yeah, years yeah. in the league and he won so many championships. So good. So like, you don't look at all those other seasons that Michael Jordan played where he didn't win a championship and call those a failure. Yeah. So like, why yeah. would you They're call just, that? Yeah. yeah. Just a part of the process. Exactly. Right? Like, it's all part executing of it. a profitable year as a, as an entrepreneur is a fucking win. <laughs> For sure. Staying in business yeah. as an entrepreneur, doing shit that you love to do is a fucking win. Especially because the odds are against you. 
they're Big against time. you times a million. Like, I think sometimes it's easy because I've been doing this for a long time. And now you guys have been doing this for a long time to that. That's normal. It's still not normal, right? It seems like it's more normal because there's more media around it. But the reality is it's still completely unnormal. And so that's a win. Now, then when you get the win wins where it's like, oh, I got ahead this year. or I was able to add this to the portfolio. We were able to grow the business. That's even more of a win. But the same, the thing that I keep thinking about, because I feel like we're hitting a groove again right now, is that, and I just heard uh, DJ Khaled. Shout out DJ Khaled. Uh, we say no one. Yeah, he did. He said, yeah, he, Keep going. he did. He said, <laughs> he said like this. He said, people work nine to five. They work multiple shifts. I work all shifts. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what he was talking about is that uh, when shit's popping, like basically step on the gas more. And I did that really well when my exposure was the highest at MP it would have been so easy to not be dieting and do 12 covers mm -hmm. to not be doing like there was a point in time where kind of how I'm starting to feel right now, I did that for a couple of years and it was just, I was always ready. Mm -hmm. I was always ready. Put me on the fucking housewife show. I'll show my abs tomorrow. I'm ready. Like, that's you know great. what I mean? Like that, right? Holla. Yeah. So my point is that that's how that time frame was. And I think it's not about riding the high, but it's about when you feel shit is like the momentum is building. Don't then go, oh, I'm going to be on cruise control. At 65, you want to say like, oh, I'm going to run at 90 and hope I don't get caught. Like you got to push. And I think that's one thing that I'm kind of starting to feel similar things as I felt before. And I'm like, all right, I know what this feels like. And I know exactly what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And now what you guys are going to watch is exactly what I know I need to do. And that changes a lot of things because then you're forcing that momentum even more because you're adding more discipline to it, more ideas, extra work, you know, a better opportunity for it to keep growing changes some stuff so and then but when it was low it really still requires the same or even more work mm -hmm. it's really the same the really the same amount of level of work and discipline that's happening that i know i need to do right now i should have been doing then and i started i started building up to that but the reality is high or low they really require the same amount if you really want to be successful mm -hmm. like it really can't require less or more because less will get you caught up more will get you caught up. It has to be that fucking level that of requirement to really push mm -hmm. either way. I don't know. Yeah. Where my mind goes right right now with this is no matter if you're up or you're down, like you still have to like control like the inputs, like you control what you're yes. you know, doing to a situation. So not focusing on the fucking external environment of what's happening in the market or, you know, consumer behaviors, whatever it may be. Um, so one little snippet that, back to Deegan, he said below average people focus on those factors you don't control. Facts. And so like, it's, it's even easier when you're down and you're getting fucking pummeled over and over again. It's easy to fucking just be like, you can never use the excuses of the external. Factor. Yeah. So it's, you're a yeah. fucking pussy if you do that. Yeah. But like, that's what the, the, the normal, like default is for most people. It is. Is like, and it's it, easy to it's fall into that. Or... I'm a fucking victim. Mm -hmm. Of course. But what, how can I, this is what I ask myself. How can I be the intangible person or asset that doesn't, that changes that, mm -hmm. that all those other factors that are fucking everybody else up, they don't apply to me because I'm different. That's mm -hmm. what I keep thinking. How am I different? Why, if that adult person's going to spend their dollar, they know the value over here is different than everyone else because G, our team, the, like the site, the fucking, the supplements, everything is just different, different experience, different outcome. Like it's got to be an intangible difference. Mm -hmm. And I think like if you let the external factors weigh on you, even though that is true, that does happen. But if you like, nah, I can't really, I can't, uh, succumb to that just reality. Mm -hmm. And then I think if you operate that way, you're pushing on that pressure of that external factor, but eventually that external factor is going to not be a factor anymore. And then I think you can just blow right through it. Yeah. So, so my brain went to the most basic thing of so what you guys said all the above mm -hmm. that 100 percent goes on above the line but yes 100 <laughs> mine goes to and i think at an early age just being around sports watching people especially back home people are using sports as the escape they sure. would base their how they reacted to people how they respond to people what mood they were in 
all buy if their fucking team won or lost. That's true. Like high school football. If we lost, or the Steelers or Browns. Lost, yeah, if they <laughs> lost the game, it was like the fucking worst the week of their life. And it wasn't just for an hour. It wasn't just 20 yeah. minutes. It was like fucking a week. Yeah. It was like a month. Um, so picking up on that, I was like, why the fuck? It's, it's, in, it's all about perspective, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like my dad would always talk to me about perspective. Like things could be worse. There's always, you know, diff- people got different situations. At the end of the day, like, a sports game like dictating something like that it like causes like your mood and what you think about and how you act yeah. like i would i just picked up on that early i never wanted to experience it's like bad that. yeah I so agree. that's why even like playing sports in high school if we like lost or like we were losing i never i was never high i was never too low and i always think that whenever you're winning and shit like that on my mind we just went to like how the fuck do i get better basically mm-hmm. like what like on to the next one and then if we lost it was just like what what do I need to do? It's the same it's the same mindset. What do I need to do to get better and keep going? De Niro said something like, When everything's riding high, don't be feeling yourself too much. When everything's low, just know it's gonna end at some point because the other one's gonna end at some point too. So it's almost like know when it's popping that it the time frame is the same as when it's not popping. And mm-hmm. everyone goes through waves. Like that's why I started fucking with you guys like a couple months ago. I was like, I'm getting hot again. I can feel it mm-hmm. because it just uh, it just works that way. We've seen yeah. it happen how many times now? Though, yeah, you know. And this one's gonna be awesome. Another <laughs> little little quote bomb for you. So if you've ever seen the movie with Johnny Depp Blow before, uh, yeah, I have actually. Yeah. So uh, his dad says to him, and it when he's young or whatever, because like they're struggling like financially and stuff and stuff and everything, and he says, "Sometimes you're flush and sometimes you're bust, and when you're up, it's never as good as it seems, and when you're down, you never think you'll be up again, but life goes on." Yeah. Yeah. Super well. And the only thing that heals like or helps all those things is time. That's what that guy mm-hmm. said that started Uggs. He's like, it just I was in it. He said I was in it for twenty years. It's a twenty year process. I thought he thought it was a much faster process, but it was a twenty year process. And the only thing that helped the ups, downs, then the ultimate success is he didn't quit and it was just time involved. And yeah. that's why I started thinking about a lot of these businesses differently because most people aren't willing to put in 15 or 20, but they're going to it at a normal job. Mm-hmm. They've got to work somewhere. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, why not camp out for 2025 20, and build something awesome that's yours and with homies you like? Mm-hmm. You know? So I, yeah, that, that was how I was going to actually like tie it all together was relating that to mm-hmm. basically, you know, focusing on the climb, not the result sort of situation. Mm-hmm. So like that. Um, back in that UG interview or whatever, he talks about, you know, it's inevitable. You're going to hit fucking roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. And he talks about like your you should ability, expect it. Your, yeah, yeah. Your <laughs> you shouldn't expect for it just to work. Like the only people that are going to, you know, make it are the people that are willing to keep finding ways around it every single time because they're, mm-hmm. they're never going to stop or whatever. So and it reminds me of your your uh, your dude Walt Disney, uh, he, he has your dude. Yeah, he had a well. Yeah, shout out Disney. I think Sh- of uh, I, I I don't think of Disney. No, I'm just of, I'm I, saying I, I it reminds me of a of a quote. <laughs> so <Okay>. yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> I'm an Iger but dude. it was like he a um, basically talking about like your uh, the people who succeed are the people that like just simply don't give up or something something like mm-hmm. that. So. That's what Go I'm ahead, saying. Minnie Mouse. What do you want to say? <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say, like, I'm just fucking with you. I, yeah, I think I think the Walt Disney was cool, and he's no, just Cole's a big crazy. Rob Iger. Rob Iger. I'm, yeah, because he's yeah. a business dude. He fucking took Disney to the next level, which was already big. It's hard. It's hard to take a company that's already that big, and how the fuck do you make it even bigger? Yeah, you know, right. and he literally did that. He basically congrat- like made a, you know, everything uh, entertainment yeah. is Disney, yeah, and yeah. that and how he, you know, respected the. Shit, but I need to do. I've watched some like stuff on like Walt Disney and stuff, but he he also seemed like kind of weird. But you well, got yeah. but, but, but you gotta be but you gotta be weird. He's like an to Elon type level. of character, bro. Dude, of course really he is. Weird. Like you yeah. gotta be yeah. you gotta be wild to get it to that. He's kind of like the in the like Jobs. You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Like just in his own dude. Part. None of them dudes are. They're all fucking like aliens, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on. Yeah. The back to your point of the when you start a business, you got to know this. Uh, you're so excited, you think. It's a fucking, you know, you got the best idea, which you might. You think of all these things. You can raise capital. You can do this stuff. You, you spend your own money. Whatever you do to get it rolling, you should expect roadblocks. One million percent. If you go in thinking, and I, I never expected these things. I just was like, oh, I'm a fucking start my gym. 
I know how to train people. Let's fucking get it. Yeah, it's going to be like this. It's not fucking how it works. And, you know, I wish somebody would have told me, look, you need to keep that enthusiasm. You need to keep that excitement. But you need to also be a little bit on defense because you're going to so to prepare, not prepare like you're scared, I'm not playing prevent like defense. Realistic. I'm playing offense, but be realistic on that. You should have a little bit of a nest egg of money because you should expect that there's things that come up that need fixed. And you should expect that the clients during December in Reynoldsburg don't want to spend extra money. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you should know that your, your income is going to fluctuate. Like there's some things like I was unaware of, I had to figure out. Mm -hmm. And I think that every time, and this goes all the way till just recently, I figure out and it's, this is from the Andrew Carnegie book too, How to Raise Your Own Salary. There's a blessing, or I was thinking Grow Rich, there's a blessing on the other side almost every time, right? There's some hard thing that's difficult that you have to get through. And even most recently on some of the business stuff over the last year that I've had to deal with, as bullshit as it was, I would say to myself, this is necessary and what's on the other side of this? Because a lot of people would quit right now. And I know that. I know that about multiple times in my career, I would look at myself in the mirror and say, a lot of motherfuckers wouldn't be able to go to sleep tonight. A lot of motherfuckers will quit on this, but you're not that way. Gee, you're built different. Like, how do you figure out the solution? And then what's on the other side of this? What's on the other side of this? Mm -hmm. Sometimes there isn't something on the other side, but most of the time there is something. And then an opportunity is more clear. Maybe the business or me personally or us, we're set up in a different situation for it to see it, take advantage of it. And with the confidence of figuring my way through that wall, under that wall, over that wall, blow up that fucking wall, drill a hole through that wall, whatever way, fuck, I got through it. The strategy and the confidence I gained through that experience made me a killer in the next spot mm -hmm. every fucking time. So that's when people like that don't really know the shit I've really been through, that just kind of assume maybe I'm a muscle head or whatever. That's why I'm a fucking killer in some of these things because I done been through all this shit. And so when I get up against things and I get through it, it's just preparing me for literally the next spot. Mm -hmm. And I've said a million times on this, if this company blew up to some crazy number, I would be able to handle it. I would know what to delegate and what not to delegate. I would feel comfortable in the rooms with the people that we that operate with us now, and I wouldn't be scared. But it's like at the end of the day, like all of that shit pre previous to this is what would get me ready for that. And I know that, but I didn't know that at the time. Mm -hmm. But now when I'm in situations, it's like the play's moving slow. Yeah. I, you guys have heard me complain about it. I've tried to be real transparent so you guys can learn. But as I'm figuring these things out, I just already know what it's getting me ready for. That's why I've been fucking around saying, I know okay. it's coming because I just done all this other crazy shit. It's just how it works. So you have to say, am I willing to sign up knowing that's what I'm signing up for? There, it's just inevitable. That is what you're signing up for, and you got to be okay with that stuff. Um, uh, one place my mind just went while you're going on there was knowing when to uh, put your foot on the gas and like when to just fucking put on cruise control. Yep. And my mind went to uh, comparing Jim Trestle's offense versus Urban Meyer's <laughs> offense. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes your game plan, depending on the situation, is you just need to run the fucking power eye yep. down the throat, just get the ball down the field. And if you have to punt it, just punt it. Yeah. But it's then all, sometimes it's all you got to be strategy. high tempo fucking offense. QB read hit fucking 40 yard passes. You got to go all in on that. We're in so. a high tempo office point right now. hundred <laughs> percent. You know yeah. what I mean? And the other was just, we got to get through it. We got to run the ball. We just got to keep giving it the beanie. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 And boom. <laughs> You're playing like a cold, like windy day. You just got to run the ball. Correct. But I, but I agree. But I think, you know, being in enough situations, you start to feel when that is. I mean, you guys could really talk about Varsity Creative because we kind of got hot going and then the fucking whole crypto fucking thing crashed. And so then you're like, you are you guys are kind of yep. dripping back up now, working on some stuff. But it's like, it's all positioning and time involved. You don't like, Trey doesn't like, like NFTs any less. No. But it didn't make sense to do what the thing. So it's like, that's a first roadblock, right? So then you go. All right, well, what's the next strategy? And you guys don't you're, have to tell it, but I I'm, I know what you're working so on. So I'm going to compare it to football. We okay. were playing in whenever the <laughs> please Cole <laughs> whenever the whenever this high tempo 
run and gun clock. Like that's what the cool offense was. Yep. Now you're seeing it's going to go back to smash mouth football. That's basically what the experience was. Exactly. We were go- it was going through like seven. It was like high scoring games. It was like playing like uh, like, like, like Big Twelve. Yeah. yeah, it's like watching <laughs> Baylor and Texas play. Yeah. like fucking high Zero scoring defense. games. Zero and defense. it <laughs> immediately went to oh no, that's not cool anymore. We want big fucking guys, and we want basically you know Go Big Ten. Yeah, it's Big Ten. Yeah. Big Ten yeah. offense. Basically. It literally shifted like that. That's, that that was <laughs> the, my experience. That, like, that, like, that, that's how I experienced. It, but yeah. what happens like, is, yeah. though, and what I love about what Trey did specifically is in that time, his enthusiasm within that market, he has built himself into the king of Web3. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, then as the offense goes run and shoot again, mm-hmm. guess who's going to be out there in the fucking call the plays? Trey's going to be running streaks. Facts. <laughs> so it's like that shows that that's a good indicator of like you're in it because you believe in it. And that you're building it no matter if it's up or down. And then when it's time to press on the gas again, the stuff that I know you guys are working on will be hit play. So I think like that's, this is a really good, I mean, because it was hot, 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 hot at the highest level. It was cool. Yeah. But it's going to be cool again. And you guys are going to be one of the major players. Trey, Trey's, Trey's the coolest. I, already, no. <laughs> I don't think you understand. Like no, Trey's no, angels, I, that, that group message is popping. It's banging. <laughs> So anyway, Trey, what was your what, like? What's your thoughts? What was your experience? How do you uh, yeah. digest the whole conversation? Um, okay, so the only thing else I would add is like just obviously like well we keep talking about like keep going and everything, but like I would say you want to keep going though because you don't want to be the person to ask like you don't want to like never know though mm. the, on the on the flip side then I would feel like because you want to keep going because then you don't want to be the person to give up on your business at a roadblock or something like that and then twenty years later you're, okay if I would have done this different then where would my life be? Like, oh, didn't get the actual shot. The first yeah. shot. Yeah. So yeah, the, this, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, I'm, I'm frightened or scared of that. Yeah, right like there. The regret, like the regret of, I didn't give it a try. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I think 90, I was, I was, I was researching something about centurions, which is, uh, uh people that are hundred plus. That's weird. I'm reading about something right yeah, now. Yeah, it's really that. interesting, right? <laughs> I was reading about <laughs> I was reading about blue zones. I was reading on it started on nutrition. I was reading about parts of the world where people live like mm-hmm. a long time and what they eat, right? Because a lot of it's based around that in their lifestyle. Their stress level is actually a big part of it too. Mm-hmm. And then it ended up down this rabbit hole of this guy that interviewed a bunch of people like in their and and one of the things was that eventually you get so old that it makes no sense for you to take the risks and you have to live with that's my last squat number that's a business i never fucking tried and a lot of people like probably 97 percent of people don't really get a chance to do what they love for their job and regret that that and family time i think those are the two things that kept popping up like they were maybe successful in their career of whatever their job was, but they were always gone and they, they missed their kids' lives or whatever. So there's a couple of things I kept seeing that I kept thinking like, I just don't want to be like regretful when I'm like, man, I had so much more in the tank. I had all these resources. Why didn't I step on the fucking gas? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's athletically. Cause I mean, I'm about to be 45. So that's things I think about like how many more meets do I got? How many more times can I jump with treadway? Like, you know, all of those things kind of whirl with me because I'm like, been doing this for a long ass time mm-hmm. so it's like but i think that's an important thing to keep in front because it'll keep you motivated so for yeah, sure cool that was some good shit i mean now just yeah to that but also like <clears throat> i knew that whenever shit was going down in the nt space relatively thinking like it yeah. just wasn't becoming cool anymore i saw trey basically in the pack and you just got to know whenever you're that guy or you're not that guy and Trey's that guy, He's, and I saw him. He got that it factor, boy. Yeah. So while Trey was over here crushing the fucking, uh, you know, NFT space, making all these connections, doing that, I'm going the opposite side, and I'm basically trying to figure out this whole fucking media yeah. production. Like, how does that system operate? So then, at some point, we can combine the two worlds. Of course, because how I view it, Trey's the fucking CEO of the fucking NFT space. Yeah, he runs that shit. Facts. I'm just here to support. I'm down for the ride. I remember. Well, I'm in it, but I'm not like crazy in it. You know. Well, but. 
you're going to play your part, which is exactly. a huge part. And what I loved about when you saw that happening, you kept telling him you were going to be a security. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, you got hey a role. homie. That's your homie, bro. You that's your business your partner. And he's saying, motherfucker, you be the fucking star. I'll be your fucking security. Hey, we we going to win. It doesn't hey, matter. I'm 100% game to be like, yeah, that's Trayvon right there. And they're like, oh, who are you? And I'm like, yeah, I've been, I've been around with Trayvon. I'm a security guard. <laughs> like, 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 like people's going to know me as, uh, uh, yo, who's the dude that recorded Kanye's documentary? I'm like uh, that yeah, guy. Yeah. I'm like that guy. Hey, you know what he huge, huge, crucial piece to the part. You signed for forty mil. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, you ain't. I, That's dude, fuck I'm it. Doesn't matter, bro. You know, hey, I'm good with that. You just gotta know your role. You gotta know when you're that guy or not that guy. Hey, and I, sometimes you just gotta be a role player. Maybe you're not gonna be the star player, but you can be the role player and make a difference in winning as yeah. a team. Hey, That's what like Steve hey, I felt good when uh, one of the NFT homies like asked Trey if he worked out with me. Trey's like, "Yes, yeah, my business partner." He's like, "Oh shit." Yeah, like, right. see, see, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's what people know about me. They just they because because all right. So I battle like the whole NFT thing. I I tweeted out the other day. I wish Twitter had a, a GIF because okay. I want people to know I'm in the NFTs. Yeah. But I also like I got a lot of shit personally like yeah, you yeah. know going on where like some people look at the NFT and, like judge me different whatever. Yeah. I, don't, I don't fucking know. So I battle back and forth. But um yeah they Trey just calls me like they just people just in the NFT space know I'm Trey's business partner. That's I it. should put that in my bio honestly probably. <laughs> Probably should. You probably should. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so good. One of your credentials is King of Web Three's business partner. That's right. I mean, I fuck with it. It's got a credential. It's a great. I mean, I. It's a made up one. I've been making up my credentials forever. Where is every credential made up though? Yeah. Uh yeah, dude. I used to, every <laughs> business card I had had a made up credential on it. Associate director of. I remember we were like making up. Uh, Treadway needed something on his email. We had to make up like it. This shit's all fucking. Made it's up all anyway. made up. Yeah. And like the resume list, like everything we do here, you just add, add it to the resume. Podcaster, <laughs> web developer, uh, customer service, yeah. uh, packing orders, uh, like yeah, pro yeah. product fulfillment, all like operations. Like, I mean, yeah. do all. I remember the big thing was before the internet was like real popping. If you, if you had like a client that did something in another like country, you'd be like, international business because they have that as a fucking like should, a degree, right? Too. Yeah. You so you were, you're, that, so like you literally that. like, I mean, we have members in like 50 countries or some shit like that. It's like, yeah, we're doing worldwide business, international business, you know, worldwide, right. worldwide, worldwide motherfucker. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that was some awesome stuff. Yeah. You got to call it 10. Yep. All right. Shit. We'll wrap it up. Anything else you guys want to add? Do um, some fucking arms. Today. I think it's just fucking good. Yeah. It's just yeah. fucking awesome. There's a lot of nuggets in here. Yeah. Just good conversation in general. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you guys. All right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Roundtable God. Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed. And the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are out.